Let's go down to Rome's raw, real, messy-ass garage rant. And I know, Thursday Night Football certainly didn't turn out the way that Vikings fans wanted to. And beyond the crooked-ass officiating, the Vikings straight up did not play well enough to win, especially on the defensive side of the ball. The, the offense essentially disappeared after the first two drives. And... You know, you got to play better than the refs refs, and it is what it is, right? And I understand that this, you know, a lot of people think that this is the worst 5-2 and two team in NFL history. Oh, 2016. Oh, 2020, uh, 2003. Oh, here we go again. Nah. Nah. Where, you know, a lot of people came into the season with lowered expectations. Uh, may, maybe 6-11? Maybe 7-10 and 10 if everything goes right? I hope I'm wrong. No. We've seen flashes from this team. They just simply have not put things together the last two weeks, right? And you, know, you cannot discount the 5-0 and start. And I understand, like, people who want to bury the Vikings, they want to be negative. They're just like, they, let's ignore every single positive aspect about this team. You know, like the offense getting off to fast starts, slinging Sam Darnold, uh, playing uh, above his skis, Uh is he a top five quarterback right now? No. Is he a top 10? Yes. You know, Justin Franklin Jefferson still being him. Kevin O'Connell doing re- really well with scripted plays, but so Kevin O'Connell would do really good if he had to follow a script, like uh, he was in a movie, but if he had to do improv, eh, maybe not so much. And also let's not forget how this defense got after things the first five weeks and, you know, like, so th- there's been peaks and values. And it's not a situation where, well, they figured out Kevin O'Connell. Oh, they figured out Brian Flores. It's a game of cat and mouse. And you have to evolve uh, week to week as well as in game. And that's where I think the Vikings have struggled and where they have to get uh, their ish together is that Kevin O'Connell has to learn how to call plays in the flow of the game. And what up? Uh, As well as, yeah, you can come on. Uh, as well as uh, the Brian Flores defense, they got absolutely zero pass rush uh, against the Rams, uh, against a, a very helter-skelter offensive line. And it's not like it's the Lions. It's not like it's one of the best O-lines in the business, but they didn't adjust. And you could say it's tired legs uh, because of the short week, or, ooh, it's the Lions effect. Because every time the play, a team plays after the Lions, they lose. Nah. And buying that, I think what it is is short week, uh, as well as travel to the West Coast. Plus, Flores has to do something about the rotation. All right, because guys were gassed, right? And in terms of getting snaps for Jalen Redmond, having Levi Drake Rodriguez up and after it, Dallas Turner's played seven total snaps. Uh, Patrick Jones' second has been very inefficient in terms of his pass rush despite the early sack. So they got to get something going in the front seven. And you know, part of it is missing Cashman. I mean, Cashman outside, how about that? Like, the, the defense was uh, the best defense in the league, or a minimum top three, and they ain't three the first five weeks with Cashman, and the last two games without Cashman, they look like ass. Thank you. Uh, giving up 31 points and then uh, 28 points respectively, and as well as 700-plus yards over the last two games. That's not good, right? Uh, but you do have to take heart. Like, all of the good pieces are there, and plus, you can tell, like, this team has raised the bar, and I still think that they should go all in at the trade deadline because, hey... You're going to have a first-round pick. It's going to be late. It's going to be number 32 overall. And I understand that you ha- you are don't have a ton of draft capital right now, except your roster is thick, THICC. And also the Vikings have a ton of cap space next year to help supplement the roster. Plus, the, think about it, the key positions. Quarterback of the future. You got them. Right? So you have that in your back pocket. You're good to go. Diamond Dallas Turner uh, is also going to be in, in that mix. Plus, you got Rouse and Jurgens can hopefully fortify the offensive line. And then also, you got Will Rockard, the best kicker in the business, man. That's right. And uh, we didn't include him with the winners uh, last night because that's just what's expected. That's what the FBS all time leading scorer does, man. That's right, baby. All right. But uh, I understand how you could be negative, Nancy, right now. It's like, oh, it's time for Wolves and Wild season. Oh, we're giving up. All right, fine, give up. It's perfectly fine, man, because th- this team has had success. The team, This team knows how to get things done. And I actually do think that the Thursday night game was a bit of a trap game. Turned out to be, right? Where for the entire bye week, you got ramped up for the Lions game. And you dug yourself a hole in that second quarter. You came back in the second half. Time ran out, but you went toe-to-toe with allegedly the best team in the National Football League. And there can be an emotional hangover after that. Now, I'm not saying it's the physical toll hangover. We're saying like, oh, dude's playing the lines are 0-5. But 
maybe the Vikings were just like, okay, we, we sort of shot our emotional wad in that spot. Short week. Oh, it's the Rams. Oh, the Rams are two and four. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And all the rest of the NFC North is making fun of the Vikings. Like, well, we beat the Rams. How about you? Well, first off, the Lions hurt Puka. And then the Rams played the Packers and the uh, Cricket Chicago Bears without Cooper Cup and without Puka. And we got all of that. And props to the Rams offensive line. I mean, they, they took care of business. They were able to run the ball, Kyron. They protected uh, Stafford. Three pressures, zero sacks. It's rough, man. And Stafford, when protected, like he can still slice and dice him up, right? And it just sort of is what it is. Uh, maybe the Vikings were looking past the Rams. You can't do that in a week to week league. And that's why I, I get itchy when people talk about how the schedule it gets easier, opens things up. No, the Colts want to whip somebody's ass next Sunday night in, in prime time. Uh, as well as you got the Jaguars, you got the Titans trying to save their season. The Bears obviously want some of this too. So, hey, every single game is a fight, but that's okay. The Vikings have won five fights so far. And just just because things haven't gone your way recently, don't discount the good things that have happened early on in the season. And there's plenty of room for improvement, especially offensively. Kevin O'Connell calling plays in flow. Uh, Aaron Jones, you got to find someone else because you can't keep running Jones into the ground like this. Someone else besides Justin Fring and Jefferson has to step up as a pass catcher. Where's Jordan Addison been? All right. I, it's so frustrating because I, I know that you know, we want to poo-poo on Jalen Naylor because he dropped that sure touchdown uh, against the Rams. It is what it is. But Jalen Naylor, when Addison was out early in the season, looked like a way better wide receiver, too, than number three has so far. All right? And that's something that they have to address. Also, you know, Darnold having a target over the middle of the field with, when Hawkinson finally gets back is going to be fantastic. Defensively, I mean, they're a proud unit, and they have to figure things out. And Flores, maybe he's too stubborn with the blitz. Maybe it's as simple as Cashman being back. Maybe it's having the corners press. Maybe it's a lot of things, right? But the answers are in this room, as well as maybe with the Jets and the Titans and the Giants. Maybe the Panthers, J.C. Horn one time. right? Uh, but this is still a damn good football team. Uh, it's a long season, and it, it is what it is in this spot. Where you look at the Rams back in 2021, back in the day, when they won a Super Bowl with Kevin O'Connell, they had a three-game losing streak in the middle of the season before they righted the ship. I think the Vikings certainly will do that as well. And they're still tough. They're still physical. And, you know, but it, it, that Jake Bates mit, kick misses or the Vikings pick up a first down, completely flipping the script, changing the narrative. Game of inches. It's what it is. Every single week. Uh, the opponent gets a vote, and you can't take anyone uh, unseriously, and that, that includes the Minnesota Fight Vikings. So we, we've seen how good this team can look, and uh, the Vikings will get back to where they once belong in all phases, still believe in this team. And also, hey, can, for the love of Christ, can the Lions and the Packers or the Bears lose one time over the weekend just so we have something to be petty about? Please. I mean, uh, the, the Lions get to play the freaking Titans. The, the, the Jaguars uh, host the Packers. And the Bears get to play the Commies, probably without Jaden Daniels. So, we'll see. Yeah. But take care of your business, and everything's going to be fine, baby. That's right. Enjoy the season. Come on, man. Uh, but that's it. Raw Real Garage, right? You guys are the best you know what to do. Skull Production Value.